Hello everyone, my name is Felicia and this is In My Travels. Today, we are going to talk about some uncomfortable truths about moving abroad, what no one tells you. So we're going to cut through this noise, uh, I think. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of people need information like real, real honest information about living abroad, working abroad, studying abroad, in any case, you're going to be living abroad, right? So um, I've spent most of my adult life abroad. Uh, I left this country when I was 20 years old. Uh, that was some time ago. <laughs> and I've worked in, uh, lived in places like Sweden, France, South Korea, and most recently China. And, um, you know, you don't have to move abroad. That's let's start there you don't have to move abroad uh it's it's quite daunting it's exciting yes um it's always worth it whether you uh, you know go abroad and you find out oh my god this isn't really for me or you find out my god why haven't i done this sooner uh it's always worth it but i feel the need to come to you and help you on your particular journey as it pertains to moving abroad, leaving everything and everyone that you know here to embark on a new life abroad, right? Wherever that is. So the first will be, uh, let's talk about the honeymoon phase, right? Uh, I have my notes here, so that's why I'm looking. The honeymoon phase. Um, that initial excitement that you see everybody, um, you know, they're, they've landed, and they're so happy or you know maybe the first or second day they're still very excited most of the time yes they are excited but a big part of that is masked panic you know it's so easy now to walk down the street with your camera uh, you know whether it's your phone or you know like a real camera and just you know have this beautiful scenery behind you because you've done it you've you know you've done whatever research you've done and and now you're there so you're excited about walking through the streets that you used to only read about or see other people on youtube talking about a lot of that is panic okay so now you're there now what what do i do because after the youtube is you know whatever video you've shot is done you're there you're probably there with all of these papers you have to also unpack um, you just have to figure things out right um, that's a part of the international life that's the beginning of it so that honeymoon phase I think really truthfully it only lasts you about two weeks at the most and then after that you have to figure some stuff out I was gonna say a bad word but I'm not gonna do that today so another part is you'll miss the weirdest things um, no one prepares you you know you're in this new country no one really prepares you for the little crazy things that you'll miss like I don't know your favorite brand of potato chips or um, maybe some feminine items that don't even exist in the new country that you're in and you're like oh my god uh, why didn't I think of packing this or you know I sure would love you know peanut butter or whatever it is and then you find out those particular items are uh, they cost astronomical prices uh, you know if they exist at all in your new place so no one tells you about that uh, I'm thinking like what did I miss when I first moved I was 20 years old and I moved to Sweden I think I missed like having you know the quote-unquote American breakfast and I used to eat eggs you know that's a typical thing uh, that people eat here in the US if you are not from the US you know eggs and all kinds of things for breakfast and I was like oh what oh what is this this is yogurt but it was sort of like a runny yogurt baby by the time I left this was four years uh, that I stayed in Sweden I 
I came home and I couldn't stand the smell of egg, eggs and I still can't st stand the smell of eggs. You know, you get used to certain things, but no one tells you that you will miss certain weird things. All right. The third thing, and I think this is very, very important, your identity will be in flux for better or for worse. When you leave the U S whether you like it or not, you are a representative of this country. You are an ambassador. And you know, if you look like me, for some of you who are totally new to this, you will suddenly become just American, just American. And that is a, there's such a weight that is lifted from your shoulders from that, that I loved and still love. I'm just an American. When I go abroad, especially when I live in France, they never think that I'm American because I speak the language, right? And I will get to that. I speak the language, I speak it fluently. But even in the beginning, I was just l'Americaine. You know, I was just the American, no matter, you know, Sweden, South Korea, China, that was it. So that's a part of it. I had, you know, before leaving the U.S., I had never, ever had to, you know, I never had to question whether I was American because, you know, I was born and raised here. Yes, I'm American. But you don't find out how American you are until you leave. And that goes, you know, that is the case for, you know, black people, white people, <laughs> black people, white people, uh, you know, Hispanics, etc. You will find out how American you really are. And that comes to this fourth thing that I want to talk about. Um, if you have to return for any reason, maybe this is, you know, uh, uh, voluntary, you, you want to come back. When you return from living and working abroad or even studying abroad, it can be difficult because what leaving the U.S. and experiencing all these new things, positive and negative, it helps you to grow in so many ways that you won't even, you can't even imagine now because you're probably still in the U.S. But if you should happen to return for, you know, any amount of time, you will quickly find out how much you've changed and the people that you've left behind, the situation, the life that you've left behind has not. And that can be, that can be very difficult to deal with in the beginning. It's, it's called reverse uh, culture shock. Is it, it can be very, very intense. I've experienced it and um, you're kind of alone again, but you know, everything around you is familiar, the language, the customs, the culture, but you yourself are different. And that's because you have experience being or creating yourself in another language and culture. And that is nothing to sneeze at because it takes a lot of work. I'm going to tell you, it takes so much courage to leave everything and everyone that you know behind. For me, it wasn't a big deal. I was ready to go. I, I was 20, so full of life and energy. I've always been and am an adventurous spirit. I didn't think two, uh, two seconds about it. And maybe that was because I was the age that I was. I was 20 years old. You know, I'm just going to go to Sweden. I'm going to live. I'm going to, you know, do all these things. And I didn't think about it. But after maybe about six months and that, that first winter hit, my God, I was questioning why, what have I done? What is going on? I was so depressed. It was seasonal 
depression, but it was also, my God, what have I done? And after that first winter, after I you know, got through my first winter, I was fine after that. I was just, this is my life now. I can do whatever I want. And this is my independence. You know, now I am a adult, a grown person, and I can make all of my decisions for myself, etc. And I still do that, right? So when you have to come back, you're a different person. Just know that. Just know that. Some of you are moving abroad for three months. Maybe you're taking a sabbatical. Some of you, um, like a lot of, I think a lot of uh, black women, they're like, get me out of here. I'm tired of this country, et cetera, et cetera, for whatever reasons, you know, that they have. And there are some really valid reasons. Um, they're just, they just want to get out of here. But I think instead of run, I, I don't want to say that these people are running from anything, but they're really not thinking about the life that they are in the process of creating. I think a lot of people in this space are just, get me out of here. I just want to, you know, lie on the beach. I want to take pictures and beautiful gowns and show everybody back home that I did it. And that's a part of it. I'm not judging you, but know that living and working abroad is so much more than that. You are creating your own life. You're creating a new identity for yourself. That's all, I, you know, that's all I want to say. But uh, I had to come up here and just for a little while and just tell you the real, right? So thank you for listening. Um, if you have lived abroad or you are currently living abroad and this is new to you, please drop down in the comments and share your experience, please. I wanna hear from you guys. Um, I don't think in the history of, I don't know, have we seen I think so many black American women move abroad. Of course, black people have lived abroad before. This is nothing new. I haven't done anything new. Uh, you know, there were people before me, um, the older generation, generation and generations who came before me who, you know, established themselves uh, abroad. So no one is doing anything new under the sun, but never in the history have we had so many I think black women just move abroad just because they want to create a different life for themselves. And never in our history have we had the technology to, to share our um, experiences. So that's the new thing. So thank you so much for joining me here. Um, again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Or I didn't even say it again. This is the first time I've said that. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. That helps me out. And again, if you have lived abroad, if you are thinking about it, um, please share your experiences. Maybe you can help someone with their research, etc. Of course, I am here uh, as a source uh, for you. Let me know. I am so excited to find out where you guys are, what you are doing, and um, yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Ciao.